Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of background and then they're going to give a presentation. Several of the speakers have projects in Kern County, so very excited about it. But uh, so Gary Aguanaga is uh, the president of True North Renewable Energy and they have a project, a proposed project in East, East uh, Kern. And Gary uh, is, um, prior to joining uh, TNRE, he was four years with Harvest Power and Harvest Energy. And out of Orlando, he's, he's responsibility for their energy facility. Also, he spent 25 years with Waste Management, uh, which is actually a, a um, subsidiary, uh, Willibrator, and uh, responsible for, what, 21 projects oversight. So he has that background. They've identified Kern County as a good place to do business. And we always put our money where our mouth is, right? We make that promise and, and we deliver. So Gary is going to talk about uh, their, their project in uh, East, East Kern, which I believe is in Mojave. Gary? No worries. Okay, well, th thank you very much. Um, and really to EDC and Richard and the county for, for hosting this event. It's, uh, it's so refreshing for me to not be sitting behind a, a Zoom screen today and actually be able to be out here engaging with people live, talking about such important issues. So thank you. We're really excited to be here. Okay, so I want to tell you a little bit about who True North Renewable Energy is and how we believe we fit into the renewable energy space and are a good fit for Kern County and California in general. Um, so maybe I'll start with our parent. Our, our parent is True North Venture Partners. They're a large venture uh, capital fund with really four primary investors, uh, the Waltons of, of Walmart, um, Ted Turner, uh, Cox Communications, and Mike Ahern, who took first solar uh, public a number of years ago, one of the first renewable energy companies to go public. And they really have one, one focus, one mission, and it is, to, it is to take, is to develop companies that they believe have cutting edge technologies that can solve big environmental problems in this world, whether those problems are waste or water or energy or advanced chemicals. That's the focus of, of the fund. We're one of those companies, and our focus, our solution is really attacking two of those problems. One is waste, and one is renewable energy. And basically what we do is we use a, what's called a high solids anaerobic digestion process to biologically break down organic waste, so food waste, grass clippings, uh, orchard pruning, et cetera. Uh, instead of that material going to landfill, we break it down biologically and we make a pipeline grade renewable natural gas and a high grade compost for the ag industry. Thank you. So what's the need for, what's the need for that, that kind of technology? Um, well, we throw away a lot of material. In, in nationwide, over 40% of the food waste that's prepared ends up going to landfill. And um, as I'm sure everyone out here knows, landfills emit an awful lot of methane. And methane is a short-lived climate pollutant, which is about 30 times more potent than CO2. And um, we've got to stop emitting methane if we're going to reach our climate change goals in the state and in the country. Um, and so there's legislation in place. It actually, enforcement kicks in the beginning of 2022, that says um, in the state of California, 75% of all the organic material that's been landfilled, that was landfilled in 2014, has to be diverted for beneficial use. So that could be compost, it could be anaerobic digestion, it could be a combination of two, which is what we use. That's about 15 million tons a year of, of compost. And so, again, our focus is to develop and build the infrastructure that can uh, safely take, process that material, and convert it into pipeline-grade gas and, and compost for the ag industry. The technology we use, if you look at the pictures up here on the screen, it's, uh, there are lots of different uh, AD technologies. 
the high solids anaerobic te technology is very versatile in terms of what kind of organic material it can take. So there are some technologies that can just focus on food or composting, for example, primarily is focusing on green material with a little bit of food. Um, high solids AD technology can take it all. We could take 100% food, we could take 100% green, we could take commingled material. A lot of jurisdictions are moving toward commingling their collection, so they're not having to add roots to comply with the compliance. Um, and we can take pretty, you can see in the bottom right corner of the slide, uh, a lot of material, especially as this market matures in California, is going to be pretty contaminated at first. And so you've got to have a technology that can deal with that contamination and with the plastics, et cetera. And so this technology does a very, it's kind of a one-stop shopping approach, which makes it a lot easier for those of us who generate organic waste and those who collect it. This technology is widely used um, throughout the world. In Europe, there are thousands of high solids anaerobic technology facilities. Um, and Lorelei, I know you said you're not going to Sweden, but um, it just so happens that AD is probably 10 or 12 years at least ahead of the United States in terms of needing it, because they don't have landfill space there. They, they haven't had the luxury of putting this material in landfills over the years like we have. But Germany alone, for example, uh, Germany actually banned landfills in 2005. They were illegal. And Germany alone has over 8,000 high solids anaerobic digestion facilities. It's a, it's a very proven, reliable, both commercially and technical, technically proven, state-of-the-art technology that does its job. Uh, California is beginning, as material is beginning to be diverted from landfill, California is beginning to build facilities. On the left side of your screen, you can see a few examples. Um, uh, Hitachi Zosin and Nova built a small project in San Luis Obispo a couple of years ago that's running very well. Uh, CRNR in Paris built a larger facility and that's running very well. And, and those facilities are doing a great job of, of being able to process that diverted material and to, uh, and to avoid those methane discharges. And so our goal is we are developing projects throughout the state of California. Uh, specifically in Kern County, we've acquired a site uh, in the east part of the county, south of Mojave, uh, next to the Rosamond landfill. It's 120 acres. Uh, we're, we're going through our permitting, planning process, diligence, site development, et cetera. It's really a great site. It's got, it's got great attributes. It's zoned heavy industrial, so it's in the right location for the type of facility we're looking to build. It's got the utilities, very close proximity to the utilities that we need uh, for the facility. It's got close proximity to uh, the existing natural gas pipelines. Uh, SoCal Gas, PG&E, Kinder Morgan all have uh, pipelines nearby. Um, and it's located in Kern County, which is very attractive to us. I mean, as, as has already been said, Kern County is a leader in organics, a leader in renewable energy. Those are our two byproducts. And frankly, they've been very, very supportive in terms of working with us and giving us guidance in terms of inward investment uh, and guiding us through the planning and permitting processes. So we're very excited about developing this project. This is, uh, if you look at the screen, this is basically what facility would look like on, on the property. Um, you can see that it's, uh, it's very well laid out. Our approach is modular, so you can, you can scale these facilities and, and increase them as, as needed. Um, most of the facility is completely enclosed so that we can control the process and control the environmental uh, conditions of the facility. Um, and basically, just to walk you through the process, um, there are basically five key steps. So, so organic, organic trucks would bring the material into the facility, drive around toward number one on your screen, uh, and that's a big enclosed receiving area where we would receive the material and pre-process it. So we, we remove contaminants, recyclables, non-organic material. We pull some high fibrous material out to use that for composting later on. And the rest goes into the AD facility, the AD digesters, which are those gray cylinders you see at number two. And that's really the heart of the plant. And what happens there is the material gets put into these digesters. And over a 14-day period, it is slowly turned with large paddles inside the digesters. And it's moved from one end of the digester to the other. 
um, and it's biologically breaking down that material. We use what's called a thermophilic process, which is a, a higher temp process, about 130 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or higher, and it does a great job of efficiently removing the biogas from the material. Uh, and so what happens at the end of 14 days is you end up with a digestate product uh, at the back end, and we capture the biogas. And then we move to area number three, which is where this biogas is basically converted to a pipeline grade um, uh, biomethane. So we, we remove trace contaminants, we upgrade it to meet the standards required for uh, natural gas pipeline and for transportation fuel. And then number five is the compost area. So we take this digestate, which is very high in nutrients and great for fertilizer and compost, and we blend it with the material that we had pulled aside before, and we put it into in-vessel composting tunnels where we convert it to a compost over, again, about a two-week period. We then mature it, and then it's available for, for marketing as a completely pathogen-free, high-grade compost material for the ag market. Uh, in the last slide, you know, these facilities, I think, have a lot of benefits for the communities that they're in. From an economic perspective, they're about a $200 million investment for a facility the size that we're looking to build in Kern County. Uh, lots of construction jobs over a two to three year period. Um, and lots of ancillary services, lots of fabrication, welding, parts, materials, supplies during that period uh, from the county. Uh, and then during operations, a uh, facility this size, which by the way will process about 300,000 tons a year of organic material. Um, about 50 operating jobs and lots, again, lots of ancillary needs over a 20 to 25 year period. From an environmental perspective, I think first and foremost, we're woefully short on the infrastructure that's needed to comply with our climate change targets and to remove those CO2 equivalents from our atmosphere. Uh, and so this is infrastructure that's much needed. And, and at the same time, we're making clean green gas that can begin to decarbonize the pipeline. Um, and it, to the tune of uh, a facility this size of about 4 million diesel gallon equivalents of, of, uh, of energy. Um, and then last, lastly, um, in terms of avoiding the methane emissions, uh, it's about the equivalent of taking 17,000 vehicles off the road. Uh, and to give you a rough frame of mind, if, if the entire state stopped methane emissions from all landfills, it would be about four and a half million cars equivalent of CO2 equivalent off the road uh, which is about 30% of the vehicles in California. So we can, we can do a lot to help with climate change and, and at the same time make some good clean energy. So we're very excited uh, about the project and, and being a part of the solution here in Kern County and being part of the renewable energy portfolio. And I thank you all very much for your attention. Thanks, Gary. It's exciting to have these projects that create permanent jobs. And actually, in our pipeline now, Melinda Brown, our VP of Development, we have about seven or eight renewable manufacturing projects. You may remember a couple of years ago, we had uh, Noah Verlin with Global Clean Energy, where the former Allon refinery, they're up to 150 full-time employees. That's critical, right? We want construction jobs, but we want full-time. Hopefully, all that talk about digesting and composting did not affect your appetite. Landfills, you know, that's why I'm eating lunch, not breakfast, but, um, and, you know, Gary mentioned the Zoom. Just when I figured out how to do the cat filter, we're in person again. So, took me a while. Um, okay, so next, we got Andy Carrasco uh, with SoCal Gas, I'm, and he's going to be talking about RNG, I imagine. I'm, I'm privileged to be on SoCal Gas's Community Advisory Council, representing the Valley. I think there are two, two, uh, uh, representatives in the valley and Gary uh, sorry Andy has about more than 20 years with SoCal Gas and he works with 500 communities think about that we only have what 11 municipalities in Kern County so he has times 50 uh, and he'll talk uh, renewable uh, natural gas carbon capture fuel cells technologies and hydrogen so uh, excited to see what updates from SoCal Gas
Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So glad to be here with you. Um, I will tell you, uh, it's not the Zoom call for me that feels good. Uh, it's wearing regular clothing that feels good for me. I mean, I had to put on some real shoes today. Feels really good. Um, I'm Andy Carrasco, Vice President of Communications, Local Government, and Community Affairs. And what that really means is engaging our stakeholders throughout our 500 communities in Southern California. Uh, we service almost half the state, um, and we're proud to do that. As a matter of fact, we have representatives here at SoCal Gas, so I want to thank my team for being here, Rob Ducal representing uh, the great Kern County, so thank you. You know, we're the, we're the largest gas utility uh, in the nation. Um, we service over 20 million consumers um, in our service territory, and we are proud to do that. But today, and, and we heard a great uh, presentation by Lori Light, thank you so much, very inspiring, and it's a challenge, and I'll take on that challenge. Um, and we have to evolve, and so we're gonna evolve faster than any other gas utility in the nation. And I want you to watch us um, position ourselves here in California as that clean energy leader. So I'd like to take the time to tell you some of the things that we're working on um, to be the cleanest, safest, and most innovative energy company in America. If I get this right, perfect. You know, we were just challenged by Lorelei to transform, and, and, we're, and we planted a flag earlier this year in March. Um, we announced our bold Aspire 2045 commitment, um, a climate goal to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emission um, for our operation and delivery of energy by 2045. This goal supports California's 2045 carbon neutrality goals and demonstrates exactly how the gas system is essential and will be essential in advancing a carbon neutral economy. Folks, we're not going away. This goal makes SoCal Gas the largest distribution gas utility in North America that has set a net zero goal that includes scopes one, two, and three for greenhouse gas emissions. So, charging ahead of our journey, just a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully if you haven't seen the news, we'll make sure you get it, we recently published a new economy-wide technical analysis, our white paper, that underscores the central role clean fuels like hydrogen and renewable natural gas, Gary, um, that will play in a carbon neutral California. So this analysis examines the complexity of reaching 100% net zero emissions in California by 2045. And for the first time, it offers detailed solutions that include the clean fuels infrastructure <clears throat> needed to support and accelerate uh, this decarbonization effort and focus. It shows that our clean fuels network and it leverages our existing gas inf infrastructure to deliver these clean, uh, clean fuels and manage carbon, and we've heard that earlier, to allow this state to reach its goals more affordably, more equitably, and with less risk than pursuing one singular pathway. Clean fuels will be essential to decarbonize, their, to decarbonize hard to abate sectors like the heavy duty industry in transportation and industrial clusters in manufacturers and the like, which account for 20% of California's green gas emissions. Additionally, our analysis tells us that electrification, along with clean fuels, they don't compete. They complement each other. Electrification combined with other tools like clean fuels, carbon management, and fuel cells can deliver the most affordable, resilient, 
and technologically proven to a full carbon pathway. So for us to be at the table, and, we, and we're going to be at the table, in some cases we're elbowing in ourselves into that table. So we, we are looking at rapidly scaling up some of these initiatives today, um, which are vital. You've heard Gary talk about uh, renewable gas, and we are on a pathway to do exactly that. We've set a goal by 2030 to have 20% of RNG flowing through our pipeline system. As a matter of fact, um, we're grateful for our partners here in Kern County that has ha helped us get there, um, including Cal Biogas here, whose facility um, is producing RNG uh, derived from dairy farm manure biogas. So that's been in effect and flowing uh, for just a year. And we have a couple of additional projects um, that are similar that will be interconnecting and coming online in the next few months. And we're additionally talking to other producers um, to do exactly that. So we're very proud of that commitment, very proud on that movement, and it's moving forward. So, we were very happy to see that hydrogen is a key priority, um, and we just saw that last week with President Biden's uh, infrastructure bill uh, with Congress that secures $9.5 billion for research and development of clean hydrogen technologies. We're keenly focused on hydrogen as an essential decarbonization tool. We know that hydrogen is a clean energy carrier that can deliver everything natural gas does today and more. And it's an ideal solution for long-term storage of renewable energy. We all know that. So we see great opportunities to utilize and leverage our existing infrastructure for hydrogen application. As a matter of fact, we currently have 10 active projects um, related to hydrogen. So we're very excited about that. A little closer to home, literally, I thought I'd share a project of note here. We're building a hydrogen home showcasing how hydrogen made from renewable electricity can fuel clean energy systems in a carbon neutral future. We had a nice ad um, in the program there, but this is the actual home that's being built. This is what it would look like. We know um, that if you look at this particular home, um, it's being built with solar panels, it's going to have a home battery, an electrolyzer to convert solar energy into clean hydrogen, and a fuel cell to convert that hydrogen back to electricity. Hydrogen will also be blended with natural gas for home use in the home, in the home appliances. So it'll be a real kick the tires, and we invite everyone, once this thing gets built in early 22, to come take a tour. In closing, we know California's future and, uh, energy ecosystem is going to require an increased integrated approach of both electric and gas system. Make no mistake about it, we're going to be there. And looking at special investments in these very focused areas of RNG and hydrogen are going to be key. And so we're going to look forward to continued partnerships here in Kern County and throughout um, to move these forward. So thank you very much. Thanks, Andy. I know um, we had Cal Bio here a couple of years ago, Neil Black, which I know SoCal Gas partners with Cal Bio. They have several uh, anaerobic digesters, but I wanted to wait to use the word manure until after you finished eating. So thank you, Andy for holding back. Um, yeah, I just figured out how to tie. It took me a couple of times to tie the tie. It's been a while, right? Um, but it's great to be back in person. And it also uh, bears mentioning energy storage, battery storage. 
Uh, we have some of the largest battery storage facilities in North America, in Kern County. Many of the companies here today have those facilities, which are really critical, right? When the energy is produced, it needs to be stored. Um, and so that's something else that we're proud of, of calling uh, home to the largest facilities in North America. So uh, next we have Ed Dugan, who's with a company called Elias. Elias, does anyone know what that word means, Greek? the god of wind. And Ed calls himself the king of wind power because uh, he has over 40 years of experience. And think about Alta Wind, right? Tehachapi is that region is the wind center of the world. More turbines than anywhere in the world. So we have the wind, we're the wind center with the largest solar plant. Uh, so Ed, uh, with the uh, Oak Creek, um, the Alta Wind Center is 1,500 megawatts. And um, he is going to talk about uh, also some green hydrogen. So welcome the wind and green hydrogen man, Ed Dugan. Okay. It's Duggan, but close enough. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, see if I can figure out this uh, clicker here. I'm going to say that's probably forward there. Okay, um, yeah, my name's Ed Duggan. I'm director of uh, project, project development for WIND for Eolus uh, North America. And uh, I have been in the wind energy business for, hard to believe, 40 years. And most of those spent in California, and most of those California years spent here in Kern County, working on projects and most of the time living here. Um, I just wanted to mention, you know, I lived in Tatch, we raised a family there and, and was on the Chamber of Commerce there. We lost a person there, uh, Ida uh, Perkins, who was the uh, CEO and president of the uh, Tatch Chamber, and I just wanted to express my thanks to her and, and everybody else, and, and it feels horrible about her passing, so that was sort of unexpected. Okay, all right, where's the button here? Is this, which one is it? Here we go. So, Lorelei, Sweden has come to Kern County. Okay, so uh, Eolus is uh, uh, one of the largest Swedish uh, um, uh, wind energy developers, uh, project developers. They've done a lot of uh, development in the Nordics and uh, we have a headquarters in Sweden and elsewhere in Northern Europe. Uh, we're doing a lot of business. And in 2017, we moved uh, over here to the U.S. That's when I joined Eolus. Uh, and uh, we currently have about 2,400 megawatts of wind and solar with battery storage projects under development and 200 megawatts of standalone uh, battery storage systems. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm focused on the wind part myself, okay? Uh, our headquarters is in La Jolla, and we have offices in Dachby and Reno, Nevada. Um, you'll see this is a map. We've got uh, over a thousand megawatts working here in in in, uh, in California, you know, of project pipeline. And you'll notice that the first project we built was in Tehachapi here in Kern County. There's a reason for that. Um, you know, basically we uh, repowered. If you ever drive through. Tehachapi, you used to see all those turbines right close to the freeway. Now there's not quite so many turbines there, uh, and uh, we'll probably take the rest of them down. I, I'm a, a nostalgic person, so they're having to fight me to take them down. But uh, <coughs> I was there watching those turbines get put up in 1985, believe it or not. So uh, we replaced 400 turbines uh, with 13 turbines that make three times as much energy, enough to power over 25,000 California homes. And that project came online early this year, and we're selling the energy from it to Amazon. Uh, Lorelei has said a lot of this stuff, uh, so I, I'll just say that, you know, California used to be the number one in the country. It's where the wind industry started, really. Uh, and uh, we're... I don't know, number seven or something, if, if Kern County, or maybe it's if Kern County were a state, we'd be number seven. So we're, it's pretty impressive. And we have about two thirds of the capacity for California. 
just from 2010 to 2020, uh, the turbine size has doubled and the cost of wind energy went down by more than half or about half. Okay, so here's the challenge. Yeah, we, we ran it, <coughs> it was mentioned, I, I was one of the uh, early proponents of the Alta project and we ran into a problem in the, in the 19, late 1990s. Uh, there was great wind energy potential in Kern County a lot of people didn't realize how much potential some of us did. And uh, I had a mentor who was a really brilliant man, and he kind of, Hal Romanowitz, he kind of single-handedly spearheaded the uh, Tehachapi renewable transmission effort for many years. And then it, of course, got very popular, and it ultimately was built in, uh, in the uh, 2011 time frame, or came online around there. Governor Schwarzenegger was down for the dedication, and uh, now when went from a plateau of 800 megawatts to adding another, you know, I think it's up over uh, uh, 4,400 megawatts now, somewhere. Lorelei probably knows the exact numbers, but, uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, as the industry has grown so much, uh, there's now a challenge again. We're running out of transmission again, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some things that we might do to solve that. Um, the, the big thing is, uh, w one way to do this is to take uh, uh, wind and use it to make green hydrogen. So. Uh, there's been a couple of slides about that, but basically wind can uh, be used. You know, I, I, I got introduced to this. Uh, I really got introduced to it when I was in college and I had a professor who was proposing this back in the 1970s, believe it or not. So the academics do have good ideas, but it wasn't economically practical. So San Joaquin Green Hydrogen is, uh, approached us and we're working with them now to see if we can't develop uh, green hydrogen projects here in Kern County. Uh, the neat thing about it, you know, it's, it's a pretty simple process which I'll talk about and it can be stored and distributed from the wind energy site. But, but it needs water, okay, and people worry about that. Certainly it's a big issue, huge issue here. But, uh, the good news is not that much water. So we're looking at a 15 megawatt wind to hydrogen uh, project and that's expected to use about 12 acre feet of, uh, of uh, water per year. To give you some comparisons there, and I'm not advocating we, we uh, replace golf courses or, <laughs> or stop eating carrots, but you know, uh, basically uh, what we would advocate is finding a way to use some of the billions of gallons of uh, wastewater that uh, is generated by the state every day and see if we can't convert that to hydrogen. Um, so this chart kind of shows the many uh, uses of uh, hydrogen. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, there's, there's uh, you can put it into fuel cells and use it in buildings, you can, uh, you can uh, use it for fertilizers. You can uh, blend it in as SoCal gas. I'm so glad to hear that they're really spearheading this. You know that you know blending uh, clean hydrogen into the existing infrastructure. That's a huge thing, and we'd love to talk to them about that. So you know, I'm sure there's there's a couple of pipelines that pass through to Atchby. So I think we could uh, you know really uh, you know find a way, I figure there's probably, and Lorelei and I would probably argue about this, but I'd say there's at least 500 megawatts worth of kind of stranded wind spotty around to Hatchby that might be near pipelines or might be near uh, truck stops or something like that. So we, we, think, uh, we think we've got a way to build more wind energy without necessarily doing another to Hatchby renewable transmission project. Here's what a typical uh, hydrogen uh, generation facility would look like. Uh, again, <coughs> it is an industrial process. We'd have to go, and I gotta go, you know, I've already spent some time in that conference room 
talking to Lorelei about this project. So we'll see if we're one of the one in 10 that makes it. I'd say one in 10, Lorelei. So, so, but we, we really appreciate this great, uh, the great, uh, re uh, you know, rapport that we have with the planning department and with the board of supervisors. It's been great. There's a reason why we're here in Kern County. We all know it here. So, yep. Uh, possible uses. Uh, get Golden Empire Transit. They've got buses. Uh, they've got five hydrogen buses. They're getting five more. We'd love to be supplying them. Locally produced green hydrogen. Uh, there's a huge investment coming in the uh, state infrastructure for, uh, for uh, fueling stations. So there's another opportunity there. There's multiple truck stops in Tehachapi. They should, they should have a hydrogen option. So we, uh, we're looking forward to uh, providing them uh, hydrogen also. So 15 megawatts of uh, wind energy installation could produce about 2,500 kilograms of green hydrogen daily. This is a slide I had, to, we had one number off by, okay, it's right, yay. Uh, so we could serve either 60 municipal buses, 50 semi-trucks, or 500 uh, fuel cell electric vehicles, saving 10,000 metric tons of, of carbon emissions per year. That's just from 15. Multiply that times uh, 30. That's what I think Tehachapi has good potential for right now. And, you know, yes, uh, there is the old challenge of having things be economically viable, right? And, uh, uh, you know, the wind industry, everyone scoffed at it, and there were tax credits that got it going, okay? And, you know, sometimes I'll... I'll you know, sometimes government policy, you know, uh, does spur things forward. And so it's not always bad to have government trying to incentivize stuff. Uh, maybe that's my, uh, I grew up in Massachusetts, so maybe I'm a, a bleeding heart liberal still way down under me. But uh, I think it's good to see, you know, but I, I do believe we need to find a way to work with all the existing industries here in Kern County. And find a way to get hydrogen blended into the, the infrastructure. I am not a believer, I believe strongly that the oil industry needs to prosper here for decades to come because there's, you know, absolutely, yeah. I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a wind guy, but I, I'm a realist too, so, yeah. So, so we, uh, but we think that we can be part of the solution to you know, the carbon issue that we have and the global warming issue. So thank you very much. Uh, hopefully I didn't forget too much here. So. Thanks, Ed Duggan. And it's Eolus. Luckily they have pronunciation guide. Uh, and Ed mentioned, I think about, you know, uh, wind, uh, the turbines, the cement, the blades use hydrocarbons. So we have all types of energy working together. And that's what's happening in Kern County. And um, so I'm excited to have a doctor. Don't hold that against him. He is a doctor, <laughs> not medical, but a chemistry a PhD. And uh, talking about uh, all types of energy and workforce. And I, I know he has a long resume too. I won't, I'm not sure how many papers he's authored, but he will not be reading those today. We don't have enough time. And uh, uh, Dr. James McGarra is the Dean, Associate Dean of uh, Instruction of, for STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, Bakersfield College. Uh, since he's been there since 2017, PhD in Chemistry, Postdoc Fellow at Northwestern University as the ACS Petroleum Research Fund Alternative Energy Fellow. I'm running out of breath, but I'll have you describe that. But uh, let's have uh, let's have Dr. McGarra, or, or as I call him, Jim, up to the stage. <laughs> Hello, folks. 
Uh, yes, I'm one of those PhDs. Um, <laughs> I also have a little bit of different background, or one that I actually want to discuss here, because how many people did K through 12 in Bakersfield in this room? How many people went to Bakersfield College? Graduate of a community college anywhere in the state of California. Okay, so some of you are familiar with what my industry might be, okay? Um, Actually, let me go take one step back. Uh, this this um, session is called, you know, renewable energy uh, projects, and it also had something about technology. So, why is a community college dean talking to you? Well, I'm a living example of a renewable energy product. I grew up three blocks from Bakersfield College. Went to Highland High School. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Let's go Scotsman. Uh, I, I think they banned the, the, the chant about Scotsman in the front, Scotsman in the back. Anyway, never mind. Um, so I went off, I, I, I got a PhD, I live some other place, but I became a renewable technology for, Bakers, for, for Bakersfield Kern County. I came back. Now, one thing that we're going to need as we talk about the transformation that uh, Lorelai Avia talked about, and as we talked about all these new technologies, are we're going to actually have to transform uh, and educate the people that we need in Kern County to be your workforce in order to cause and facilitate this change. I want to point out table 19, okay? So, so we got Cheryl Scott, we got, uh, we got Tony Cordova, and now I have to say everyone. Uh, we have Jessica Grimes, we have Devin Dordery, we have Jessica, whose name I can never, last name I can never pronounce, and we have Liz uh, Roselle, who has been running and is the director of our Energy Workforce Development Program. Uh, and we have Gilbert Uke, uh, professor in physics as well. Um, today, if you get a chance to interact with those folks, talk to them because they're going to be resources, okay? They're going to be resources as you're thinking about transforming and we're going to need a new workforce. Now, let me look at my slides, okay. So we're going to engage and create uh, this future for, for Kern County, and Bakersfield College and Kern Community College District wants to be a part of that. Okay, the professor in me is now gonna ask you a question. Why Kern County? Historically, why is this place here? Why do people even live here? We've got for over 125 years, we've been pumping oil out of this place. We have, right now, we have a $7 billion agriculture economy. And we're also strategically located in the southern part of the San Joaquin Valley. Okay? Now, people who first came here, you go think about John Fremont, who came from the east back in the 1840s and was mapping out uh, all of California. There was a pass, there was Carson Pass that was discovered and how to get to the Central Valley. But there was also another route through the Tehachapi Pass. That one's much lower. It's much easier to build a road. It's much easier to build a, a, a train. The Tehachapi Loop was completed in 1876, okay? And that allowed that, you know, not billions of dollars agriculture then, but lots of money in agriculture to be transported east. So where we're loaded, uh, located, our geography is vitally crucial to what we can do in Kern County. And people, I, I listen and I hear the people out there, they're, they're saying, hey, there's no future in Kern County. And one of our you know, things that we're gonna do with this this, our energy initiative at, at Bakersfield College is make sure to educate people because we're not going away. Now, some scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Labs published a uh, getting to neutral study 
uh, you know, they do that. They, they actually try to map out what the potentials are for the state. And when they were doing that, they, 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 they noticed that our geology is kind of unique. So there's a potential for 17 billion tons of carbon dioxide to be uh, sequestered in California, and that's a lower limit. And the study I pointed out that about three of the billion tons of carbon dioxide are in the Delta region, and 14 billion tons are in the southern San Joaquin Basin, which means Kern County. So Kern County is not going anywhere. But when you're talking to people, you want to remind them that we're blessed by geography and geology. And that is what we're going to be able to allow Kern County to be strong and economically viable into the future, no matter what any doomsday people say. So here are a few of the statistics that I was just mentioning. Okay, so why a community college? Well, uh, what are we going to do at uh, Bakersfield College in the Kern Community College District? Well, we're going to work on workforce development. And those people at table 19 are the people you need to talk to or me, and we can think about how to translate the skills that you need in your workforce into courses. That's what we do. And that's going to ha give us the renewable workforce where we take people that are here, train them up for jobs that are here. We're going to try and facilitate applied research and development so that we have a pulse on exactly what is going on with this transformation that's happening so that we can actually translate those skills and, and be able to have the workforce that you need in order to create the future of Kern County. Okay. Innovation, everyone does innovation. Policy, we're going to keep talking to people in policy uh, at the state and here locally to figure out what are the hurdles, what are the challenges. Okay. Um, the recently, um, uh, Valley Strong made an investment uh, for this energy initiative through KCCD and Bakersfield College. And uh, we have been working at this for a little bit. Uh, we have went out to some of those people in, in uh, the national labs, National Renewable Energy Lab, created a partnership. Uh, we're also working on and have developed or started a steering committee, an advisory committee, a curriculum planning committee, and a community education webinar series. The person clapping is the head of our advisory committee. <laughs> Linda Parker, raise your hand, yeah. So we're going out there to get people involved with this. So uh, the other part of what we need to do is educate our community. And Bakersfield College is, it's what we do, we educate people. So we've started a webinar series in order to actually do that. Thus far we've had six webinars, uh, one to launch it, and then most recently, we had, just yesterday, uh, we had Steve Bolin, uh, who is the state geologist, talk about exactly what we're talking about here today, about carbon management and about how we are blessed in Kern County with our unique geology. We also talked about, we had someone from uh, California Research Cor uh, uh, Resource Corporation. We're also going to hear from Joe Ashley uh, very soon and the policy aspect, Dr. Emily Wimberger, who is plotting out what, what are those long-term economic needs and how we're going to be able to deliver them in this area. So we're trying to put together the partnerships to figure out where we're going. We're going to be talking to you in order to figure out the skills that you need for your workforce so that Bakersfield College, KCCD, can actually pave the way for our future. We've got some upcoming seminars. If you just go to our web page and you click on, oops, I need to go back one, that very too small uh, link there, the Valley Strong Energy Institute, you will find a collection of what we're doing in community education. Uh, I'm about three minutes over, so I think I'm going to stop right there.
Thank you.